Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our webinar on the Essential Engineering Works, which Transic are taking forward on the railway between Lurgan and Portadown train stations. My name is Michael Long from Gravis Planning, and I am part of the Transnet team for this project. Before we move on with the main presentation, I wanted to say that in normal circumstances, we would have hosted a public event in the local area where you could call in and speak with us face to face. But due to COVID-19, we are using digital platforms such as this webinar to help us engage with local residents and interested parties. Joining me on the webinar, I have Aidan Smith, who is the project manager with Translink, and Mark Doyle from McLaughlin and Harvey, who are the lead contractor taking forward these works. You will hear from each of the panelists during the webinar and during the Q&A. I will now pass on to Aidan Smith from Translink, who will provide an overview of Translink and why this project is taking place. Yes, uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Aidan Smith. As Michael Kenny said, I'm the project manager for Translink representing this project. Um, so firstly, the introduction to the project. Um, Translink is committed to maintaining and enhancing our infrastructure to deliver a high quality, safe and sustainable public transport network today and for future generations. Um, so everything we do, and we're always striving to better and to enhance our network and to maintain the standard we have, and we always set it to do that in every project we do. Um, as, an, as an essential public service, public transport is fundamental to the economic, social and environmental well-being of our society. Yes, now, we all know that maybe in certain areas, there's the line does not reach of the country, but where it does, we and they always continue to provide the service to either people commuting or for um, for leisure um, or even their personal interest in travel. As we emerge from this pandemic, it will be vital that well-used public transport networks return to their essential role of providing greener, healthier and more active travel options for a better economic recovery. Thank you. Next slide, please. Um, Yes, so Translink is the first choice for travel, and that's what we strive to in our long-term mission statement to try to get people off our roads and onto using public transport. Um, so what's involved? We have 4,000 staff, one of the largest employers in Northern Ireland, um, it operates 13,000 services every day, and it'll be a form of bus, train, um, maintains 1,400 buses and trains and 144 million miles of travel per year. Um, we maintain over 80 buses on rail stations, um, 80 bus and rail stations and halts, uh, 8,000 park and ride spaces provided to facilitate those, um, and maintains a 3 billion railway assets. So, yeah, everything from track to halts to stations, 3 billion spent on those. Um, we, we have 300 miles of rail track and over 1,600 civil structures. So, that comes in the form of bridges, culverts, uh, anything to facilitate the use of the track. Thank you. Next slide, please. So building back responsibility. So investing in public transport is fundamental to supporting a healthy, sustainable, inclusive and responsible recovery from COVID-19. Um, important that we maintain a comprehensive public transport network and vital to build back greener, reconnecting people and places getting people back to work and school, tackling climate change, improving our air quality and supporting economic growth. Thank you, next slide. Um, so what is planned and why? So why are we carrying this project essentially and what are we aiming to do and what's the finished product look like? Um, it's an essential engineering project that we'll see the upgrading of a existing uh, signal cabling infrastructure between Portadown and Erden stations. Uh, currently the cables are installed somewhere between the 80s and 90s, and with these cables, they're reaching their, their life. Um, so before that life ex exceeds and uh, we, we encounter problems with loss of signal and then eventually loss of service, we like to address these degrading assets before that eventuality occurs. Um, so what I also involved, we have retaining walls to accommodate the widening of what we call the cess or the verge of the, the railway. So we want to move the cables to a safe position away from the movement of the train, so we, we have to widen the areas where, where the, where the, of the rail corridor. 
This project represents a major capital investment of almost £9 million um, to pump the transport translink network in the wider uh, Craig Alvin area. So when I say major capital investment, that is solely public investment into this project. Uh, a relay of nine kilometres of new cabling and associated infrastructure will mean a reduction in the level of maintenance in the longer term. So as I touched on before, with the degrading, degrading cables and with their age um, and their vulnerability being directly buried without ducting, we are there to try and secure uh, more reliable service for the long term. Uh, it will be also be essential to maintain high safety standards and improve the overall performance of the network. Next slide, please. Uh, I'll just pass you back to Michael. Thank you. Yes, yes. this slide provides a, a visual overview of the area in which the engineering works are taking place. Um, and some of those um, labels on the map you may be familiar with, some residential areas uh, in the southwest of Sago Drive and um, Drumford Meadow, with some businesses uh, neighbouring the railway as well, and, and Craig Avon Lake moving up to the northwest. Um, of the image towards uh, Lurgan, you have some of further residential areas. Um, we are obviously cognizant of our railway neighbours during the works. In the next number of slides, we will outline how we will work alongside our neighbours and how the construction methods will be taken forward. I will now hand over to Mark Doyle from McLaughlin and Harvey, the contractor taking forward this work on behalf of TransLink, and he will provide some further detail on the construction methods and mitigations. Uh, thanks, Michael. Uh, and good evening, everyone. As Michael says, uh, my name is Mark, and uh, I'm a project manager and work for McLaughlin and Harvey. So, uh, construction timeline: uh, we're, we're starting the works. Uh, start of January, and these works are due to last uh, approximately eight months. Uh, just due to the nature of the works and to cause uh, the least disruption to the trains, all works are currently planned to be carried out during night shift. I uh, suppose just to highlight that works will be carried out in a transient nature. So basically that means that works will not be concentrate, concentrated in one area for a sustained period of time. Uh, following the duct installation, uh, works will commence uh, on terminating testing and commission of the cable, uh, which will be completed uh, early 2023. And uh, there's no real large plant involved, and that is just uh, small tools. Uh, so thank you. Uh, construction methods. So here uh, we'll be focused on uh, selecting a uh, construction uh, methodology based on causing the least disruption as possible. However, uh, in some circumstances, uh, that might be uh, unavoidable, uh, whereas in some cases you might have uh, varying ground conditions, uh, working room, etc. Uh, but there'll be mitigation measures put in place uh, uh, if that is the case. Uh, so the retaining wall. The retaining wall uh, is for safety purposes, and these will be installed in various locations between Portadown and Lurgan stations. The retaining wall is made up of embedded steel posts and precast panels. The king post will be either installed by drilling into the ground or using vibro techniques, or even a combination of both. The precast panels will then be lifted and positioned uh, between the steel posts. Uh, for the ducting then, uh, so as Aidan has mentioned earlier, uh, the new ducting uh, is for the new cable infrastructure, as the existing duct is coming to the end of its life uh, and needs to be and will be, need to be replaced in places. This is basically just then a digger will go along the edge of the track, uh, excavate, and install the new duct and backfill. Uh, William Street. So this is a, a one night closure uh, where the duct needs to go underneath the road. Uh, there will be traffic diversions in place and. William Street would be left the way it was found uh, following the work. Thank you. Uh, so mitigation measures show our work program has been designed to cause at least disruption as possible to residents. Uh, where disruption cannot be avoided, we have put in place stringent, stringent noise mitigation measures to reduce any potential impact. This will be in the form of acoustic barriers at the, so the source of noise, effective silencers installed, uh, and that type of uh, idea. All the workers will be briefed prior to shift on the importance of quiet nighttime uh, working. 
our site compound, uh, we picked, tried to pick a location which is away from residential areas to minimise the amount of site traffic and built up areas. And so it was just then finally, uh, we just once they want to work with the community and where there are any issues, we'll try and resolve them as uh, them as efficiently as possible. Thank you. And you back to Michael, I think. Hey, thank you, Mark. And just to say, if you do have any questions, um, please type them into the Q&A function and we'll deal with them uh, shortly at the end of the presentation. So as Mark has touched on, um, we've placed a great emphasis on engaging with the local community and other key stakeholders. And from the outset, it has been a, a key component of this project. To summarize some of the activities we've carried out to date, um, we have issued letters and brochures via post to individual properties, 100 meters either side of the line between Lurgan and Portadown stations. And we will continue to do that um, in the new year to keep residents updated on the progress of work. We have established a dedicated web page at www.translink.co.uk forward slash LU2PD. And this will be updated as the project progresses. So residents can log into the web page and get further information on the project. We have also made use of digital platforms such as social media and this webinar, which you will also be able to watch back at when it is uploaded to the project web page. We have briefed elected representatives for the area and the local council economic development and regeneration committee. We have also engaged with other external stakeholders to ensure that they are also briefed. We have set up a, a project email address, which is lu2pd at gravisplanning.com. It's, it's on the screen in front of you for residents to contact the project team. And we will also pro be providing details of a phone number for residents should they have any queries. This will be included on any letters being sent out to residents in the new year. Related to our extensive program of stakeholder engagement, Translink are delighted to be able to bring forward a sponsorship program, for various schools, community groups, and other organizations within the area to leave a positive legacy following the completion of the works. Translink are looking forward to launching that program officially in the new year. So next steps, this cable renewal project between Lurgan and Portadown Station follows on from the Lurgan area track renewal, which was successfully completed in 2019, and also the recent redevelopment of Portadown Station. Following the completion of these works and subject to the relevant permissions being in place, there are a number of additional projects which are planned for the area. These include proposed station redevelopment at Lurgan and a signal redesign uh, in Lurgan also. So that brings us to the end of the of the formal presentation. Um, I would encourage if, if you do have any questions, we, we are now willing to take those questions and you can type the, those into the, the Q&A box just to the right of your screen. Um, just we have uh, one question in, um, and perhaps this is for, for Aidan and, and for Mark, just in terms of uh, to, to re-emphasize why this project is taking place. Um, what, what is the need for this project? If you could provide just some further detail on that, Aidan, if possible, or Mark? Yeah, so um, an issue was identified and it was early 2017, I believe, that we, we have our sights on the, de the degrading of the current cable or infrastructure there. As, more, as Mark showed before in his slide, there, we intend to install a line of ducting to pull the cables through, but currently there is no ducting um, and the cables are just directly buried. So they're pretty much exposed to elements. So not only have they reached their design life, they are exposed to beyond that. So it's in the next 10 years or even less, maybe five years, there's a chance these cables could break just due to rot, pretty much. Um, so we want to intervene that, that fall before it happens. So by replacing the whole stretch between Lurgan and Pour Down with new route for the cable, as well as a new 50, 50 kilometers of cable we pulled through the ducting, uh, it puts us in a better position to ensure we can uh, and give continuity to customers for a for a service of trains away from from Belfast to Dublin effectively. Hey, thanks very much. 
Um, we have a question uh, just just in there um, regarding the new cabling. What will it be made up of? Um, maybe that's a technical question, Aidan. Uh, if you can answer that, or we can come back to the attendee who's asked that. Is the cable made up um, largely of fibre? We, uh, yeah, it's a long term goal to try and control the, the signaling from from me and Dapo and landing station. But so there, there's a there is a number of fibre involved as well as other elements would be you know copper mainly for signaling. But um, yes, there be there be a mixture of both. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we've we we not a question but a comment. Um, thanks for for coming on and attending. Um, and the. Uh, Comment on the interesting translink project from 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 the attendee who, who submitted that question. Um, just just one question, I'd probably for me in terms of um, residential notification. Um, as I as I mentioned on a previous slide, I, our aim is to make sure all residents that are neighbouring the railway line are informed as best as possible, and that takes the form of a number of different methods we will be taken forward to engage with people um, right, regularly updating residents through letters which will be posted out to their properties um, updating the website a web page uh, translink.co.uk forward slash lu2pd and further social media activity and also a any further a, a works that we are um uh, taken forward. Um, just a uh, we, we've one further question that has come in just in terms of the the methodology, in terms of how the works will be taken forward in in a linear fashion. Perhaps Mark, you would be able to answer that. Um, in terms of you know starting in one area and moving on to the next section, uh, for that construction. Yeah, I can do. Yeah, so basically, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, the works will, will not be in one area for any uh, for a long length of time. So the program we've done a program. So maybe we'll be working in two or three different areas at the one time. But again, as as the nature of the works will be installing the king posts along with the precast panels, uh, followed by the duct in some locations, and then we'll be moving on further down the line and just really be following that process until we have a continuous line. Of ducks installed, so uh, again, yeah, we'll just it will not be in the one location for uh, a long length of time. Yes, and as part of that, we'll be informing residents as to when they expect the works to be, you know, in their area, and will not be outside their their homes for any longer than needs to be, uh, as Marcus mentioned there. Um, that's all the questions that I can see that have come through. So. Um, can I just thank thank you to all the panelists for your input during the the presentation and the question and answer session. Um, and I also want to thank everyone that has attended and has taken the time to join us this evening. Um, I hope you find it an informative session. To conclude, I would again highlight that our project team is available to deal with any queries you may have. Um, following the presentation, um, you can contact us on email at lu2pd at gravisplanning.com. Um, um, as I said previously, we'll be writing out to, to residents that are that are neighbouring uh, the, the railway line in the new year. So um, that I would just like to, to close on that. And again, thank you all for attending and uh, have, a, have a very good evening. Thank you.